my father used the word the typography and almost every copy of every book he took home. So I can tell that I was raised in a very bookish atmosphere. Now, very often, he used to call me and my siblings to read a book together, or a story, or a poem. And it was just great, you know, when he read me all those stories, I had a lot of images in my mind, just like a movie, because reading gives us some place to go when we have to stay where we are. Let's say, for instance, if we are in our home, or in the bus, or in the metro, and we read, when we read, we still go through other places. And so it was when I was reading with my father. But then, somewhere in the future, I found it really difficult to read a book. I was just going through paragraphs and sentences, understanding nothing. So, going back to the story room where he read me poems, I told myself, I will imagine everything I read. So that is what I did. I started creating images for the sentences I was reading. And as a side note, when he read me all those stories and poems, besides the fact that now I have loads of stories in my head, he introduced me to this fascinating world of books. So this fellow man is me, and this is the real world. And every time I was reading with him, I just escaped through this world of fantasy and great stories. So in this talk, I want to speak more in depth about the benefits of reading and to give you, hopefully, to give you another perception about books. And that is what I mean, this is how books really work. <laughs> so, moving away from the introduction, my first point is that I found out every book is a whole new world, a new perception. Because we see the world through the eyes of the author, it's like wearing the author glasses. And as a side note, a popular proverb says that learning a new language gives you another perception, uh, gives you another window to see the world through. And this is exactly what I mean. Let's say that next to these windows is a landscape. It's a beautiful image. And these windows come in all shapes and sizes, just like books. And if you open them, you start having another point of view of what you're looking at. And this is, exa this is exactly what I want to say. It's like having new lenses that help you see several different several things around you. And very often when I read a new book, a good book, I always, I always start thinking, wow, I never thought of that this way before, or wow, this thing really happened, or similar thoughts. And I think that everyone should experience this feeling because it's really deep. So here are we, when we are kids, we see the good part of the world, the beautiful things. And then as we start reading, this is what I call the good books that give you the perception of how the world really is, of how some people really are. But then as we grow older, we start seeing things as they should be. We start seeing things as they are. And so my next point, I'm moving on to my next point, where I'm going to share with you the fact that after you learn a new language, or you can control the grammar or, voca or vocabulary, even in your native language, the next big step is to read in that tongue. Literature is important. Every country's own literature is amazing. So do not be afraid and think that you will not understand what you will read. But be brave enough to embrace that book because it will definitely change the way you speak, the way you write. And I can admit that by telling you a story from my life. So it was around Christmas and I saw a lot of videos and interpretations from the work of Charles Dickens. And I told myself, wow, Charles Dickens is such a great author. I must read the books he read, he wrote. So said and done, I bought the book A Christmas Carol. I think all of you are familiar with this story. And when I got home, I was so excited to read. But as I opened the book in the evening, the first two pages, I didn't understand half of the content. Because writers like Charles Dickens or William Shakespeare, then to uh, use terms from Old English or uh, other terms, but it, it was all right because I was able to translate them and then I could, read the book, I could read the book quite easily. But after I finished it, I started to describe things differently, to speak differently, to write differently, because a Romanian proverb says that, uh, and as a side note to this point that after you learn a language, the next big step is to read literature, a Romanian proverb says that the more languages you learn, the more lives you live. Because learning a new language gives you a lot of advantages. But I will need a whole new tech to speak about this. So, 
my next point uh, that is closely, closely related to the first one where I said that every book is a whole new world, a new perception. I tell you that every book is a discovery that the author found. So just like Columbus or Herodotus, the father of history, every great author that had an idea or so of something or a perception of something or uh, something to show us or to prove us, uh, can be compared to these cool guys because um, because they give you another perception and I encourage you to read more because every book is worth reading and an author didn't write a book for nothing. Start thinking, why do people write books? Why are there so many in this world? They were bored at home and decided to lose some time? No, people write, wrote books because they wanted to change man's perception about something or they wanted to prove or to share several things. And now, turning on to something different, I found out that we must do to books what we would do to people. And if you don't get it, let me explain this. For instance, we should never judge or underestimate a book or person by its appearances. Nowadays, books are so underrated in the circumstances where they were used a lot in the past. And this photo, I think, describes perfectly what I'm going to say. When I was a child, I always asked a lot of questions, just like any other kid. And very often, my parents would answer me with another question, so that I would answer myself. And one day I asked my mother, how do you know so many things? And she replied, what do you think I was doing all day long when I was your age? So yeah, I found out books were used a lot more in the past. So we kept me, we can never underestimate or judge a book or person by its appearances. And my next point describes this very well and is very related to this. We should never give up on things or people or books. Uh, and let me elaborate on that. These days my brother started reading War and Peace, a long book, sure. But then he gave up reading. And I read and finished this book. And it was fascinating. And I told him, why did you, why did you give up? Why did you give up reading this book? And he was like, I don't know, man, I have read 50 pages and it's just about politics. But the book is not about politics at all, I can say. And I told him, yeah, you should have not give up, given up on this book by the first pages, you know? Because you can never make an impression of a person or a book just from the first pages, or the first pages of the person's life, or of the person's life. And you cannot make an impression of a person's life just from the part of life you, uh, he shows you when you first meet them. But try to discover books, try to discover people in order to make or live an impression. And so now we've got to my last point on encouraging you to read more. is because reading is one of the healthiest habits a person can have. For my father, it was such a big habit that he once wrote in his journal. He kept a journal writing about several events from his life. So he wrote, I haven't read the book in such a long time, with three exclamation marks. And I know that this is an exaggeration, but he really liked reading and almost anyone could see that from his behavior, speaking and thinking. And when I was little, I wanted so bad to be like him. Because as you read more, you start becoming a book yourself, an open book. And sometimes you steal the characters speaking and thinking and acting. People can subconsciously become their favorite fictional characters. Psychologists have discovered that while reading a book or story, people are prone to subconsciously adopt their behavior, thoughts, beliefs, and internal responses to that of fictional characters as if they were their own. So now, in closing, I want to leave you with these two quotes that I love. One is from, the first one is from the father of comedy, Aristophan, from ancient Greece. And he once said, open your mind before your mouth. And the other one closely related to this is, the mind is like a parachute, it must be open to work. And I can strongly admit that books can help you achieve this. Thank you.